Can y'all see my screen? Yes, sir. You got the presentation up. Yeah, well, first, I just want to thank y'all for having me, Bruce X. I do really appreciate it. And um, as X said, I love talking football uh, anytime, anywhere. So this is, it's an honor for me <clears throat> to get on here and talk with you guys about something I'm passionate about. And obviously, uh, if you're joining this call, you are too. So uh, thanks to everybody for calling in. And uh, like Bruce said, if you got questions, throw them in the chat. I'd love to, Bruce, kind of answer them as we go rather than save them to the end to kind of uh, make it more of a dialogue if we could. So whenever those pop up, just let me know. So like Bruce said, we're going to cover goal line plays, goal line mechanics. Um, and as, as everybody knows, that's the most important line on the field. Um, we've we've got to be our best when we get in that red area, and especially when we get in and around the goal line. Um, those decisions we make have the biggest impact on the outcome of these games, right? We're awarding potentially a score versus a touchback. These are, these are huge swings in a ball game. So it's important, number one, that we know the rules around the goal line, the pylon. And then number two, that we, that we know the mechanics inside and out so that we put ourselves in the best position every time to make the decisions related to the goal line and the pylon. So we've got to A, know the rules, and then B, be in a position to, to put them to in the uh, practice. So we'll kind of just get started. <clears throat> the layout here is it's going to be some definitions uh, early, kind of walking through the goal line, the end zone, touchdown. And then as we go throughout, we'll touch on the mechanics and the, there's film throughout. Bruce put this together and it is, it is a fantastic presentation on uh, goal line and, and goal line mechanics. So I won't get into much here, but, but here's the pylons. All I really want to say on on the pylons and the placement of them is this is something we need to be doing in pregame every game. We need to be walking the field, checking the pylons, make sure they're in the proper spot, all of them, especially those goal line ones and the end line ones, right? If it's, if it's even a little bit off, it could have a big impact on a play or what you see most often is they're just on the ground, right? They blow over some, the band knocks them over, uh, whatever it may be, but make sure we're, we're making the rounds in pregames and then checking them again right before kickoff uh, so we make sure all of our pylons are in the in the proper yeah. spot. Hey, hey, Jack, I don't think we saw the slide advance. I know you're talking to slide two, but uh, at least on my screen, it's still showing the title screen. What are we seeing now? Uh, I just see the title screen. I don't know if my system is slow or if it's the same thing everyone else is experiencing. Yeah, yeah that's what I see as well. Bro. Okay. Yeah, just as goal goal line plays. I'm seeing goal line and pylons. Yeah, there you go. Okay, it came through now. There you go. Really? So when I click next slide, does it go to the change? It it did. Yes, it did. Now we're on slide two, which is uh, goal lines and pylons and those details you were just covering. But if I hit again, are y'all still seeing the pylons? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yes. So more. That's not great. All right. So it's not letting, for some reason, it's not letting me uh, change slides in presentation. It switched now. just did it again. You may, you may just have to click on the, uh, on the slide itself instead of just hitting next or anything. Try that. Does this work? Yeah. So now you can see the bullets. Right. Uh, okay. So if I click, it works. Try it again. Yes. Did you see? Do you see three bullets? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Working well now. Okay. Wow. That was weird. <clears throat> well, <laughs> there was a picture of some pylons, but I, I again, we don't need to cover what the pylons look like and where they go, where they go. Just the main thing there was making sure we get those those covered in pregame. Um, here are some definitions, and these are critically important for understanding. Um, let's see. If are y'all seeing this still or no now? Yeah, I'm still seeing it. It's not in presentation mode, but I'm still seeing it. So y'all have all the bullets up? Yeah. Correct. Okay, cool. Uh, something's being really weird. Okay. So just definitions of the goal line, and these are critically mm -hmm. important. Um, obviously, we know the field's 100 yards, right? The goal lines are 100 yards apart. They run between the two sidelines. You can read those. Uh, the big one are, are, are those last two. The goal line extends between and includes the pylons. So the pylons 
are considered part of the goal line, they're also out of bounds. That can get very tricky and we've got some great examples of those, but that's, that's important to understand that the pylons are part of the goal line, but also out of bounds. So if a player touches a pylon, they are both in the end zone and out of bounds. Um, and the entire goal line is in the end zone. So again, we got great examples of these. We're just kind of hitting the definitions and uh, the goal line is the goal line you're defending. But just kind of what I touched on again, a player who touches a pylon is out of bounds and a loose ball that touches the pylons is also out of bounds and again behind the goal line. So when we're working those goal line pylon plays, the tough ones are always right there at the sideline when you've got a sideline, a pylon all at once. And so it's critical that we understand as soon as that ball or the player touches the pylon, that that play is, is over. He's out of bounds. But also, as we're going to see, whether or not the player touches the pylon or whether he goes inside or outside of it has a huge impact on the result of the play. So, Yeah, I'm not sure why, Jack. We're getting a lot of chats that it didn't advance to slide four for what people are seeing it may have on your screen. And again, I don't know what the cause of that is. I guess I'm just going to leave it here. Is this better? Uh, you were on slide five right now, yeah. Okay, can you all see this when I go back? I can, yes. Okay, something's weird with the presentation mode, I guess. Click click the screen, Jack. That's what I You I've know what doing. you just clicked on? Click the one to the right of it. Yeah, this, it's been in presentation, but now y'all won't. Uh... We won't see the animation, but we can probably live with that. So can y'all see the bullets now? Yes, I see slide uh, five, and I five. see all the bullets on the slide. See, I only see, so weird. Agreed. Um, <laughs> okay, maybe I'll just keep clicking back and forth and pulling them up because it's not a presentation mode's not working well. Um, but okay, so if y'all see all of them now, touchdown. Um, I'll let y'all kind of read through some of these, but again, the critical piece here at the top Live ball in possession penetrates the opponent's goal line, meaning the tip of that football has to penetrate the goal line. If the tip of that ball breaks the plane of the goal line, you have a touchdown. The last piece, and we've got great film on this, is the plane of the goal line extends beyond the pie line, so to infinity. The goal line goes on forever, only, only if the player touches the ground in the end zone or he touches the pie line. So that's why it's critical that we understand the rules around the pylon being in the end zone out of bounds. If that player touches the pylon, he now gets that goal line extended forever. So what I've also, this is just a pet peeve of mine. I've never understood why players dive for the pylon and reach with the ball because that it's just unnecessary. They could stick the ball all the way outside into beyond the sideline out of bounds. And if they touch it with their other hand, they now get that pylon extended to forever and would still have a touchdown. And to me, that would eliminate yeah. the threat of fumbling it through the end zone. But that's just me. So yeah, well, you're assuming that they know the rule, too. <laughs> yeah, and the coaches. Trust me, I know. I've had Agreed. this conversation. But that's the rule. If they touch the pylon, it's not touch it with the football. Touch it with anything. A hand, a foot. You touch the pylon or the ground in the end zone, you get the goal line forever. And so that's again why it's critical, as we'll see with the mechanic stuff, that we're that we're in the proper position because there's there's a lot to process there. You got to know what touched the pylon and where's the ball at the same time, and and that can be really tough. So second one, player catches the pass in the end zone. I think we may have a catch or two on here, so we'll, we'll see some examples of what it means to complete a catch in the end zone. Um, ball is caught, recovered, intercepted in your opponent's end zone. Or again, yeah, ball's dead in the end zone. We're really mostly going to focus on this top one here uh, in relation to the pylon and goal line. All right, moment of truth. We're not going to get into this part of the rules, y'all. Can, can we see this? Bruce? I'm still on slide five. This thing is oh, just... just a, no, not... just advance. Just advance for me. So I think but you can see the whole six, slide six. That's yes. so weird. On my screen, it's not. Okay. I'm living in a little <laughs> fantasy land. Yep. 
So here, yeah, here's just an example. And these approved rulings are all in the back of the rule book. So you can look these up obviously at any time. But ball carrier advancing in the field of play becomes airborne. So he's reaching for the goal line. First contacts the ground out of bounds three yards beyond the goal line. So he goes out of bounds directionally, so sideways, then go over the pylon. The ball passes over the pylon. This is a touchdown. The ball's got to go. If he doesn't, so in this example, he does not get the goal line extended because he makes no contact with the pylon or the ground in the end zone. So he does not get the goal line extended. So he has to go inside or over the pylon. Again, we got some great examples of these, but why it's critical that we're on the goal line because this is really, really tough to rule on if we're out of position for any reason. I'm guessing you can't see this either. So we'll do that again. Another AR, it's, it's a similar example. He goes out of bounds, same thing. He goes over the sideline, sideline makes no contact with the pylon. The ball does not cross over the pylon, and then he is declared dead out of bounds wherever he lands. That example, we're out of bounds at the one-yard line. And so I know line of scrimmage officials talk about that all the time and, and working on getting spots, but you've got to know when a runner crosses the sideline where that ball crosses the sideline when he goes out of bounds. It's not where his foot lands. It's not any of that. You've got to get really good and train your eye at, at identifying where the ball crosses the sideline. So. It's important when you're when you're working forward progress or a runner that you know what hand the ball carrier's got the ball in. Is it in his inside hand or is it in his outside hand? Because when he crosses the sideline, that could be the difference in a half a yard to an entire yard, a first down or not, or in this case, a touchdown or not. So it's really important that we that we're processing where the ball is in location to the sideline as a runner crosses it. I'm going to go out again and pull this back up. Looks good, Here's Jack. I first... see the video slide. Looks good so cool. far. Cool. So here we're just going to have a play at the pond. I hope it plays pretty clear for everybody. I think I've got the volume turned off, but we'll see here. We're going to have a play at the pylon. I'll let it run one time. I'm going to be at the top. And it's really close. We get a great shot here. I'll pause it there. You see, he makes no contact with the pylon. The pylon still not, standing. I did not see any movement. Just I don't know if anybody else did. Probably not your fault. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Let's just try this. Can you see it? Will it play now? Yep, perfect. Working now. All right, Absolutely. we're keeping we're keeping it in this view. I'm done with. There the, you go. Well, the slide just advanced though. The other one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure we were all system, those systems got it. So here we go. You're going to have a play at the pylon at the top. You first got a forward backward pass potential. A runner extends the ball to the pylon, makes no contact with it, right? You see the pylon doesn't move. Easy way to tell if it was contacted or not. But you see the line of scrimmage official at the top. I'm going to stop it here. Look at where he's at. Ball was snapped at, say, the seven. He slides down to the goal line. He's in perfect position. He's back about as far as he can be with these people. So he's in a perfect spot to rule on this. He backs up straight back. And as you can see, the runner leaves inbounds. And at some point there, the ball crosses the sideline, but he does not contact the pylon. So he would have to get it inside the pylon or over it. Hey, Jack, you made a good comment about forward pass, backward pass. Since yep. this, uh, line of scrimmage official had to get to the goal line because the play is coming at him. Who, who would it be assisting on whether that quarterback was behind or behind the line of scrimmage on that pass? In reality or per the mechanics manual? Uh, both. <laughs> I think the mechanics <laughs> manual says the umpire has responsibility for forward backward passes, but I don't know any umpires that are running straight towards the line of scrimmage at the snap to help with that. <laughs> Yeah, I was if more interested are, in who, who would rule if the quarterback was over the line of scrimmage because he's pretty close, right? Um, yeah. When he makes that, and it's a forward pass, I think we would all agree. Um, so who, who would be able to help that line of scrimmage official out, whether that quarterback went beyond the line of scrimmage? Yeah, I think what the re mechanics say, referee has the line of scrimmage or umpire. One of the two has the line of scrimmage technically. 
Um, yeah, I think letting... referee could help. And I think with what would you recommend for the cross field line of scrimmage official when he sees that play clearly go to the other side? Would he get to the goal line immediately or would he hold the line a little bit? What, what would you recommend? Yeah, I would re I would still recommend being on the goal line. You don't. OK, I wouldn't recommend trying to cheat back. Really, you know, it's easy for these guys working this game. They've got replay, so it's not super critical, right. but. It's one of those things you've got to have in your pre-snap routine of where we snapped from. Um, mm -hmm. And you could get help from the referee. I think the offside official having a wide angle probably has the best look and could cheat a little bit back up the field. But these are the ones you're just you, you got to make yeah. a ruling from from a few yards away, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and this we're not always going to be in the perfect position, but you've got to make a decision on this. From where he's at and he's got to know the line was the seven he's pretty close don't guess on it um but the line of scrimmage official i mean really this is all you the umpires and referees it's in the mechanics but they're not thinking that at least i don't know any yeah that are that are processing that and, and putting themselves in any better of a position than you're in right the umpires probably here the referees way back here you know no one's in a great position so the line of scrimmage official you really just got to do your best um, Agreed. And, and play the percentages, right? The most important thing here is still the goal line. Yep. You're Good. rarely going to see that. But line of scrimmage officials, this is why, you know, our jobs are so difficult. You got a lot to process here in your lap. You're on the goal line, forward, backward, beyond. It's tough. This official does a great job on this play. He gets there. He doesn't punch backwards, meaning I'm assuming he's working it forward, which it was. Um, but he's again, it'll stop here. He's in perfect position. The runner leaps, does not contact the pylon or go over or inside of it. So wherever this ball crossed the sideline is where the ball is dead. And the official does a really good job of killing the clock and coming up and getting a spot. So this is one I think was really, really well worked on the field. And he got it right. And I think because he's in great position. So again, that's why it's so important that we're on the goal line to make a ruling on this. We've got another one. This one's a little blurry, but again, this is another one. There's going to be a tight forward backward pass and you're going to see um, kind of the opposite of what should be done and what happens when we're in bad position. Right. I mean, we could, start a list of what went wrong on this play, but I think what happened, Bruce, and, and this is kind of what you talked about is a line of scrimmage official. You see a, a tight forward backward pass. You're like, oh crap, let me get back there and see if I can rule on it. I think this official got more concerned with this pass than he did the goal line. And so he starts to, I guess he starts to cheat back up field. I'm not really sure what happened here, but Mechanically, this is what we cannot do is bail on the goal line. We've got to work straight back because this play develops just like the last one. Clearly no contact to the like pylon. Had, it looks like you just had a brain fart or something because there's no reason for him to do that ever. No, exactly. Sometimes, and it happens. We all do that. Um, but he puts him, I mean, he is, uh-oh. He's in no man's land here trying to rule on the goal line from the five. And I know that's a terrible feeling. And he gave it his best guess, which unfortunately was wrong. Um, but this is why we've got to get to the goal line and stay there. Because from here, you can see, I mean, clearly he's not going to make contact with the pylon. That ball's outside of the pylon. It's it's short of the goal line. Um, and I, I'm not sure what replay did in this game, but... I think they upheld it, if I remember. Um, give us a little bit of insights. So you've got that other official on the on the in line. Yeah. I mean, he's kind of looking down the line. He might have been able to come in and say, hey, just so you know, uh, the ball, ideally, if he had a good view of it, he would say, hey, that ball was outside the pylon. What did you see, right? I mean, there should have been potentially some discussion there, I think, from the guy on the in line, right, looking straight down the line. Yes, I've I've seen a few deep officials do that, and it's a huge help because – to Bruce's point, the line of scrimmage official is going to be back here. So he, the line of scrimmage official is going to know, did he step out of bounds or not? And did he make contact with the pylon? 
but you may not have the best angle on if the ball went inside, over, or outside. And I have seen some deep officials, to Bruce's point, they've got a better angle, potentially, of if it crossed over, inside, or out. And that information is always welcome, Bruce. So deep officials, if you if you can help with that and you're positive, please bring that information. I think, I think it certainly could have helped here. Um, if the line of scrimmage official had given him a chance, he just – you know, went up, but yeah, deep officials, if you can help with that, you're not, we're not expecting your help on, you know, feet or anything else, but that ball in or out with this angle, they're looking straight down would, would be much appreciated. And I think would have helped them possibly get this right. But the main takeaway here is again, you don't touch the pylon. You don't get the goal line extended and be, we've got to be on the goal line. Here's that example in in word form. I think the plays are a lot, you know, more helpful, and we've got more. But again, the ball carrier dives for the goal line. He touches the pylon over the top of it, or goes inside of it, and then lands out of bounds beyond the goal line. And again, if you touch it, you get it extended. If you go over it, you're good. If you go inside of it, you're good. So unless I don't, oof, oof. in all cases. You're breaking the plane of the goal line and you've got a touchdown. Again, run an example. We'll ignore the potential low block. But again, this official, we'll just stop it right here. I mean, he's already he's headed straight back as far as they'll let him. Great position. Runner dives. You'll see here he hits the pylon with the ball. So at this exact moment. The ball is A, dead, we're out of bounds, B, we're in the end zone for a touchdown. So as soon as he hits it, in his possession like this, if he loses possession now, we've got a touchdown. If he hits that pylon in possession, it's out of bounds, and in the end zone, we've got a touchdown. So all of that is after the play. And again, I wish we got those cameras, but we don't. Again, the, the official's positioning on this play is absolutely perfect. Go back as far as you can. And I'll tell you, that's another thing in pregame or as you start to get into the red area in the game, clear that area. Um, a lot of times the ball boys want to stand here. The photographers, whoever it may be, they all want to stand around the goal line. Because, again, that's where all the action is. But... Line of scrimmage official and deep guy, give yourself as much room as you can because you can you can go back forever and rule on this play better than you can if you go go laterally in either direction. So I think we've been picking on the line of scrimmage officials a little bit. We gotta get we gotta get some of our deep guys involved. So here's a great long run play for for deep officials. Did y'all see what happened here? I'll just play it again and you see where he ends up on this play. And again, all kinds of stuff. No. Look where he is right now. Here's him. So he got to the goal line great. He just kind of lost his perspective of where it was. And it ends up being a super, super close play. Look here. You've got to rule where that ball is when that hand touches down. So he's out of bounds right now. If that ball is inside, touchdown. Above, touchdown. But whatever, wherever that ball is at this exact moment is where it's dead. And so he's unfortunately way back here trying to rule on this. And again, it's just a guess. So deep officials... This is something I would recommend practicing in, in pregame. Practice, you know, starting at the 30-yard line and backpedaling and running to the goal line and breaking down. Just get a feel for what you're going to do on a long run and, and have that awareness when you're approaching the goal line so that you don't blow past it like this and put yourself in a, in a bad spot. See, he just drifts, drifts, and now we're 
we're out of position. And this is a tough play. These are hard if you're in perfect position. We're going to miss some even if we're on the goal line. But you see that? They end up reversing this to short. Now, again, I don't know if anyone's good enough to get this from right here in real time or not. But the mechanics put us in the best position to make the call most of the time. If we're in the right position, more often than not, we're going to get it right, right? So that's what the mechanics are designed to do, is to put us in the best position to make the correct ruling. And, and you see here, we're just, we're kind of lost. The yeah, and it's like are... literally one inch maybe into the pylon. I think you're right. I think they did not call a touchdown, but yep. I think Rogers Redding was, or whoever it was, or Shaw was saying that it was a touchdown. But man, you're right. This You're talking milliseconds of screen capture, right? In your eyeballs. Yeah. Again, yeah. The, again, perfect position. I don't know what, I still can't tell you definitively, and I'm stopping it. I don't know. Maybe. Right, but we've got to be in good position to sell the call. I'll be, I would believe this official a lot more if he's in great position than if he's back here kind of guessing. So that's yeah, it's position again about like credibility. Yeah. Yep, if you're in yep. great position and you rule confidently, I mean, I'm buying what you're selling, and, and most people are. You can tell as an official, especially, you can tell when a guy is confident in what he's ruling and when he's not. And I can guarantee you, this guy, when he realized where he was, wasn't excited about about the ruling so again the mechanics are going to put you in in the best position possible and hopefully it'll make you you know more confident too knowing that you're in the right spot but this this one's tough either way I, you could oh absolutely uh you one, could one thing he me. does jack it looks like he i mean when i'm not i think this is probably a, a fine thing to do he is out of position but it looks like before it comes up he does look at his uh line of scrimmage official is he What's he doing there? Is he confirming it? Do you have him in or out before he dives? Or maybe give us a little bit of uh, color commentary on that. Yep, and that's a, that's a great point I missed. That's, yeah, you'll see him here. Watch him look up, and that's exactly what he's doing. The line of scrimmage officials here, we're, we're helping with feet. I'm working the runner all the way down that sideline, um, but I'm focused on the sideline. So I've got feet, and I'm bringing you that information. If he's line of scrimmage officials, if he steps out at the three, at the two, you got to get to your official, your deep official, and talk about it. Because a lot of times, and this is a great example, if he had stepped out at, say, the four, say his foot had stepped out when he leaps, right? So I'm coming down, and I've got him. I've got a foot down at the four. But this is where you guys need to kind of piece together his, his body position, right? Because the ball's not dead where his foot is. It's where the ball is when his foot hits down. So... That's where you want to bring your information to the deep guy and say, hey, I got a foot down at the four. Okay, was he he was extended. I think he was at the three, at the two and a half. Uh, and it's especially critical when you've got him stepping out at like the one or the two. And you come down with that because in those cases, it, it's possible that he has extended the ball beyond the goal line, even though his foot stepped down at the one. So as a, as a line of scrimmage official, you're helping with the feet. I recommend just kill the clock in that situation and get with your deep guy and talk through it and take your guys' time. Don't, don't be in a hurry uh, to make these decisions because again, they're huge decisions. So if you take an extra 15, 20, 30 seconds uh, to talk through it and try to get it right, it, no one's going to mind if you, we get it right. People will be really upset if we rush and get it wrong. So, so take the time to get it right and, and put the pieces together. Cause to Bruce's point, there's a lot of pieces here there's a foot there's a ball a pylon so so yeah bring whatever information you can here's another one with words um, the ball carry heads to the right pylon at the two he dives or is blocked and the ball is in his right hand so we're again this is his outside hand and it crosses the sideline at the one and this was this is exactly what i talked about earlier he touches the pylon with his other hand or his foot and then the other b is he first touches out of bounds three yard beyond the line of scrimmage so in a you've got a touchdown if he touches that pile on with anything he gets the goal line extended does not have to be the ball so him reaching out with the foot or the hand he gets the goal line for forever and you've got a score second one again those first two two clips we saw if you don't make contact with the pylon you don't get it extended so you're now out of bounds 
wherever the ball crosses, in this case, uh, the one yard line. There's another clip again. The video is a little choppy, but I think you'll get you'll get the gist. So quick thoughts. I mean, they happen so fast. It's like, what did you see? I'll just tell you my initial thoughts when I see a play like this where official was in great position. Let's see a replay. But I believe him because he was in a great spot. You get a ball carrier dives. Not a great clip. We'll get a better shot. Watch here. That ball may or may not cross over the pylon. But what does he do? He gets that right hand right here down in the end zone. So now he gets the goal line forever. Ball's in his possession. You've got a touchdown because he gets that hand. He either hit the pylon or the ground in the end zone. So correctly rolled a touchdown. And this field judge is in great position. I mean, he's still steady. But here's a great shot. That hand hits the pylon. He gets that goal line all the way up into the bleachers. The ball's clearly beyond. The deep official's right there to rule on it. This is a great job. So that's a great example of the one we talked about where the ball doesn't have to hit the pylon. If they hit it with anything, you get the goal line extended. So that's a great example. Hey, and Jack. Really good officiating. Hey, Jack. It's X. Hey, listen, man. This is a great, great, great example of just the, even the definition of goal line extended because I think for a lot of guys out there that work in the line of scrimmage, you know, they, they hear goal line extended, they read the definition of goal line extended, but they don't even know what it really means or or how to officiate it, right? So this is great. This is great. Yep. This is, and this is what, unfortunately, to Bruce's point earlier, the players just simply don't know the rules. They think, I really believe they all think you've got to hit it with the ball. Um, there's no other reason you would dive with the ball at the pylon. Um with one hand. So this is a great example to your point. That goal line goes forever if you get anything uh, on that pylon. So goal line extended means if they touch, they get it all the way out here as long as that ball crosses. Here's another one again in AR. He heads for the pylon again. <clears throat> Ball's in his right hand and outside. And then he steps, A, on the goal line, or on the sideline, and just short. So again, he gets that foot down in the end zone. He gets the goal line. Steps out of bounds. Again, it's going to be where the ball is. So at this point, it says he steps on the sideline, it's just short. Um, the ball had crossed outside of the goal line. Therefore, does not get goal line extended. And there's a great example coming up of if you hit the pylon with your foot or something. Um, but another one, pylon again, balls in that outside hand. Foot hits the pylon just before the ball crosses or the extension of the goal line just to the right. So in A, he he essentially, his foot hits the pylon. He, think about it like he kicks the pylon <clears throat> and just before the ball crosses or the ball has crossed outside the pylon. And so in both of these, the ball didn't, I don't really love the wording of some of this, but he kicks the pylon, so he does get the pylon extended. But in both examples, the ball never crossed the goal line. So the ball's probably in his hand, and he's striding, and that front foot kicks the pylon. He's dead. Again, we talked about it. The pylon's out of bounds. So as soon as he hits it, he gets the goal line extended, but the ball's dead. So we've got to know where the ball is as soon as he touches that pylon. I want that bounce actually. And I think this is the example I'm talking about. This is, I don't know how you found this play, Bruce. It looks like it's from ages ago, but I think the kid has a neck roll, but maybe that's his hair. But this is a great look at this. Striding runner kicks the pot. I mean, this is the exact AR that we just read. He kicks the pylon and look at the ball. Clearly, the ball is behind his, his lead foot, so short of the goal line. I think, Jack, I found this video, believe it or not, on the Hawaii Football Officials Association um, website. 
wow this is i saw this and i was like <laughs> where in the, and this was in the whack oh, i guess the whack came back kind of but this is this is, this is just an incredible example of Texas point, we read this stuff in the rule books, but it's really hard sometimes to visualize some of these things we read. And this this is a great visualization of of a guy kicking the pylon with the ball back at probably the half yard line. And again, yeah, officials exactly. in officials in great position. You don't see what they end up ruling, but I'm gonna give him credit for getting it right. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jack, again, I think it's also important to note um, that all of these situations that we're talking about goal line extended is when the player already has the ball in possession. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. If he, you got it. Yeah. We can get into talking. I was, I was going to try to avoid talking about fumbles and touchbacks too much, but yeah, there, we have a couple plays actually coming up where, where there are a loss of possession at the goal line. So I wasn't going to do hypotheticals yet, but we do have some clips of, of, of fumbles and loss of possession. So X, X is ready to go. No, I'm just saying, man, because this, this can get, you know, it can get really weird if you don't understand, you know, the ball has in possession. If it's not in possession, then it can't be. Yep. Yep, that, that's good. We'll add another wrinkle in a second. Now, then you got to start thinking about getting the beanbag down and recoveries. It gets, it gets messy around the goal line. We think it's, oh, a touchdown or not. It's, People don't realize how much goes into to making these rulings. <clears throat> Another AR, he's hitting his forward progress, stopped him out near the goal line at the sideline. So when he stopped, he has the ball in his right hand extended beyond inside and be outside. Again, this is just another example. He's obviously not going to touch the pylon or touch anything in the end zone, so he doesn't get it extended. But in this, in A, as soon as he the tip of that football breaks the plane of the goal line. It's a touchdown, right? You see here, as soon as it's extended, the play's over and it's a touchdown. They could drive him back 15 yards. He breaks the plane he's in. The other one, he extends it outside. So think sideline, he goes over the sideline and reaches. Since he doesn't get goal line extended, it's dead where he crosses or where his progress was stopped, you'll say. So where the ball was when he sends in this example, he's driven back, but no goal line extended there because again he doesn't touch anything inside he doesn't break the plane inside and he doesn't get doesn't get it extended so this is our, our our favorite play i think where we just wonder what what in the world these players are thinking but you've got a runner probably unopposed running to the end zone he drops the ball at the one goes to celebrate no one does anything. The ball hits the ground just outside or just inside the goal line. Rolls along the ground is declared dead, and no one attempts to recover it. So I'd say the first thing on a play like this, great job by the officials. I think it's so easy to assume he's going to score, throw your hands up, and blow your whistle. Um, don't assume, as you've seen with players, I think Deshaun Watson was famous for this. Don't assume that they're going to run into the end zone with the ball. They'll drop it at the one, the two. Um, and take off running. So we've got to be alert that that is, is something that happens now <clears throat> often. But in this example, where you have a ball, a fumble, uh, that ends in the field of play, right? So this doesn't go out of bounds. That's a whole nother scenario. But if it comes to rest in the field of play and no one attempts to recover it, eventually the play kills itself and it's dead, the ball goes back to the fumbling team at the spot of the fumble. Um, this happens yeah. every year, Jack. One or oh, two games absolutely. all the yep. time. Yep. And you can kind of think about it. The rule is very, very similar to when you have a forward fumble that goes out of bounds, not out of bounds in the end zone. Again, that would not apply, but out of bound, a forward fumble out of bounds, the sideline, you're going to go back to the spot of the fumble. So that's actually what they modeled this rule after was the ball then goes back to the fumbling team at wherever they fumbled it if no one attempts to recover it. And so... Uh, similarly, I think Ricky or someone asked me a question today about that. In this case, you would take the ball back to the spot of the fumble, and the clock would start on the on the signal. Yeah, I think that was a rule change last year, right, Jack? It used to be that uh, if Team B recovered it in the end zone, I think you got a touchback, or even if another Team A player recovered it in the end zone, it was a touchdown. But I think they've changed it now to not give Team A that advantage anymore, and um, of of a touchdown if a Team A guy went on it, but. Uh, 
they just moved back to the spot of the fumble now. That well, was someone, last year, if I remember right, or the year before. I might be getting my years wrong. Well, if someone recovers it, it's you've got a recovery. So if B recovers it in the end zone, you do have a touchback. And if A okay. recovers it, assuming it's not fourth down, um, you would have a touchdown. This is just that example where it comes to rest and no one tries to pick it up. Sorry, that's what so I meant. When it when it yeah, when it comes to rest and nobody picks it up, it used to be a teammate touchdown. They changed it now. That's what I meant to say. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes, because it, yeah, that was the old weird example where it was dead yep. in the end zone, technically. Yeah. And that was kind of on yes, yes. They did change it last year to where now it goes back to the spot of the fumble if no that's, one attempts yep. to recover it. Yep. Yep. So again, as the officials, it's a great job in this ruling to not do it. And I actually think we have a play coming up uh, where a guy does. It might be this one. Oh, yeah. Mm. You can't always tell by where the ball hits, right? You got to be, that's why those deeps have to be on the, on the goal line, right? Exactly, because again, your momentum, the ball's momentum and the players is moving forward, so it's going to land in the end zone. But if it lands on the goal line, that means he dropped it short because that thing's moving forward at a pretty good rate of speed. Um, but to Bruce's point, again, I think this back judge gets there. And he, he gets in and settles down. You know, I don't know if the officials blew this dead or not, but this is clearly fumbled in the field of play. And you see number six, he kind of thinks about it. And then he's like, eh, maybe not. So I don't know the ruling, but again, this is this is deep officials. Again, he's getting, I mean, he's probably not in a great spot. Let's look at the difference here. Yeah, back judge this is really good. This is phenomenal. I mean, he is, again, goal line awareness. We saw the play earlier where the guy blew past it. This guy gets there, settles down. He is still straddles it. He's getting there, should be able to rule on it from there, but you clearly see this is, he's dropped it in the field of play. I wonder if we can see what they ruled. Yeah, and unfortunately, Jack, I don't know that I had video that showed what the outcome of this play was. Yeah. Well, you see neither official signals. So yeah. obviously it's a live ball. I mean, this player could pick it up and take off with it. He could just jump on it. But mm -hmm. but in that approved ruling we just we just kind of talked about if if everybody assumes it's a touchdown like our friend here did, and they just leave the ball there and no one does anything, again after a certain period of time the play's over. It's the play kills itself. It's dead. No one's attempting <clears throat> to recover the ball. Th at that point we shut it down and we would give Team A the ball back at the one yard line, the spot of the fumble, whatever the half. But that's the approved ruling, but this is a live ball. Just because it lands in the end zone or whatever is not dead. Anyone can come and recover this and advance it. So to Bruce's point, it's critical that we get to the goal line and we do not assume that this, this player is going to run into the end zone with the football because, I don't know, I think it's cool to drop it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's got to be something. I, don't, I think they're planning a little too early for the celebration. <laughs> Exactly. But we see it every year to Bruce's point. Some, this will happen in a game next year. Um, I just hope it's none of yours. This looks like a, a Dallas game. Yeah, it is a five man crew, though, just to point out. I'm just looking at Eric Ames, but whatever. Um, Yeah, I don't. I don't think Bruce. Do we want to spend any time on five man mechanics? I don't think so. Is that Eric and the umpire? It is Eric. Heck yeah, that yeah, is Eric, and I think it's Sheldon Davis. Matters. It's Sheldon Davis as the uh, back judge. I, I think the only thing you can really talk to about oh. here is the back judge because the mechanics going to be the same for five or seven. Um, yeah. I didn't see a whole lot of communication between the two um, because I would have expected that short flank running up there to at least have got some kind of eye contact with that back judge and maybe even go talk to him like hey what'd you see i didn't have him out what'd you have yeah absolutely if you see a ball out i mean to bruce's point we, it's, we can't see where the back judge is on this play but this is one where you've got to be on the goal line five seven you got to be straddling this line looking straight through to help with with this pylon here because as you can see i mean this is pretty clearly out um where did this, where did this play start 
uh, D, let's call that the, call it the 50. 50, yeah. In that area, 45, whatever, B45 maybe, but yeah, I mean, this is a long, clearly a long run ball out. And here's an example. The ball doesn't come to rest. This ball goes boom out of bounds in the end zone. So now this is, this is huge ruling. We've only got two choices here. You've got a touchdown or you've got a touchback. And someone's going to be very upset either way. And it's critical that we get this right. And, and unfortunately, in a five-man game, a line of scrimmage official, you're, there's really nothing you can do besides what Bruce said. And that's kind of come down and say, hey, he didn't step out of bounds. The ball went out of bounds through the end zone. Get your back judge to help. Was it fumbled before he crossed? Did he break the plane? Um, in a seven-man game, we'd have an official right here, and I would expect to nail this. But this is just a good example of the rule again. The X is point. If we have an official here, you've now got to be processing, okay, fumble. What does that mean? You got to get a beanbag down in the field of play, okay? So we, we don't want to get in a hurry here. Mechanically, if there is a guy on that pylon, you would want to beanbag here, let it play out, kill the clock, talk with whoever you need to, and then give the touchback signal or let the referee announce it. That would be they, how it's handled mechanically. Yeah, I mean, the, the booster somewhere. club members on the inline, they, they, they were calling for a touchback. <laughs> yeah, what do they got here? Let's see. Is he giving the signal? They're like, hey, oh, it should no. be the other way, the other way. <laughs> Sometimes they're right, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is a a really tough play for a five man mechanic. So, but but most of our games now at this level are seven. So we'll have an official there. But but again, you've got to to exit point earlier. You got to be in possession of the ball, right? So we're also ruling on possession here. So if you've got a runner that that loses possession, you're now working a fumble. So think, you know, you may be having a beanbag dropped, and then you've got to start working a dead ball. Is it recovered in the field of play? Does it go out of bounds inside or outside the pylon? There's there's so many things you have to, to rule on here. So it's critical again in seven man that we've got someone, let me go back here, right on that pylon that can say it was fumbled in the field of play and then it went out of bounds in the end zone, right? Because you get a really different answer if it goes out at the one. Um, Did he rule a touchdown on this? Yeah, yes. they just rang them up. He did it without looking at the back judge. Yeah. Again, five-man game, it's tough. But, again, I, I would reiterate what Bruce said. If we get crazy plays like this at the goal line, the pylon blows up, the ball comes out, it never hurts to go talk. Take that extra 30 seconds, even if you've both got the same thing. Don't assume you've got the same thing, number one. But just get together. It buys you some time, too. It buys you a couple 30 seconds or moments to process what in the world just happened. Did I have him out of bounds? Was it a fumble? Where did the ball go out of bounds? And I think a lot of times when you start to talk about it with another official, it starts to come back a little better. You start to kind of piece it together rather than just a snap judgment here where we just, I don't know who he's nodding head with, maybe one of the fans, but Take your time on these and, and really get together and communicate because these are huge plays in a football game. This is a seven-point swing and possession of the ball would have gone to Team B. So is take your time. No, is that Troutman? Somebody. Who is that? I just want to uh, say that. I believe that. Yeah, yeah, I believe it was. But, I mean, I think that point, that's a tough call, right? And five, man, it's really tough. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, kind of what we sold, that's what we sold the coaches on, right? This isn't – you can't expect exactly. an official to yep. make this call from the 15-yard line. I don't blame him at all. That's yeah, just impossible. Is so, again, that's why we've got seven guys, and that's why in seven, man, we've got to have someone on the goal line. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what? It looks like he is looking at this right there. Is he looking at, is he looking at the back judge or no? I think uh, he did. I, he might have, but and I don't know. But we can't see what the back judge was shaking his head yes or just going, I don't know. Yeah, Hard it looks like he gave, he gave a signal. I think he signaled also. I think oh, okay. he went touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Right in could the last be. frame, looks like he came in and said, yeah, he's coming down with. Could be. There's only one thing he could be doing. I mean, if his hands are up. Yeah. Again, a tough one with five guys, but 
yeah. Um, yeah. get together Agreed. and communicate on these. We've kind of been talking about this the whole time. We probably should have moved the slides around a little, but um, goal line mechanics, seven yard line and in, line of scrimmage officials, H and O, you're responsible for the goal line. And what is what is responsible for the goal line mean? It means you are moving in that direction towards the goal line at the snap. Um, it does not mean turn and run for the goal line. It doesn't mean wait a second and go to the goal line. It means once the ball is snapped, deliberately move towards the goal line. So don't don't rush. Let the play kind of determine how fast you need to go. But you got to get going in that direction while also not taking yourself out of position to officiate the play. I see people all the time that will turn and run. If you turn your shoulders and your head, you're now doing you're now doing nothing. I mean, you're just running. So find a way that you is comfortable for you to move towards the goal line while also keeping your head. And, and to me, I think your shoulders really need to stay on the action so your field of vision stays open. Um, so practice what works for you on getting to the goal line immediately. Uh, it's not a rush. It's not a race. But you got to go at the snap and you got to do it in a way that allows you to, to continue to officiate the play. Um, and if the H and L have the goal line, that means the F and S are on the pot, on the end line. I'm sorry. The only thing I'll say on that and on the goal line in general is you got to start communicating way before you get to the seven. Um, to me, I think you should every single play. It's my pre-snapper chain. When we get around the 25, I will look at my F or S, and even if they can't hear me, I will say your goal line, your goal line, all the way, every single play if that's where he's going to start or it's his goal line when we get in that red zone area. That way, when we do get to the seven, it's just, it's automatic that I turn and look, I see he's gone. Oh, my goal line, it's mine. And if you do that every single play when you get down there, it, it almost eliminates the threat of someone not being there. So get, in, get comfortable with your, your partner on the sideline there and make sure you are talking every play when we get we get down in the red area because it's again that's the critical area of the field. <clears throat> and then the last bullet that we kind of talked about it when team A's inside the five, the umpire is primarily responsible for the passer being beyond. But yeah, I'll just that's the mechanic. If if your umpire is going to do it, awesome, good on them. Line of scrimmage officials, you, you need to be able to, you need to have an opinion on those plays. And then again, we talked about this. <clears throat> and so, Bruce, this is this is, is this mechanic a TASO approved mechanic or one that we just want to be aware of? We work it um, where you stop, pause at the line again, and then go to the goal line. But I don't want to tell anyone wrong. Bruce. All right, well, it's in here, so we're rolling with it. Um, we move to the goal line at the snap, but if, if the line to gain is in between the goal line and, sorry, the line of scrimmage and uh, the goal line, it's recommended that you pause at that line to gain, right? It's, we say prioritize your lines. So if you're snapping at the five and the line to gain is a three, so they can get a first down at the three, you would slide, pause, make sure that's not threatened. Once it's clear, then move on to the goal line. So you're you're prioritizing your lines because if you go straight to the goal line, there's a really good chance there's going to be a tight play at the line to gain, and now you're out of position to rule on a first down or not. So that's that's what that means when we say we don't say stop, but it's a pause, pause at the line to gain. If it's not threatened, get to the goal line. Um, again, prioritize your lines down there. Yeah. Can you hear me now, Jack? Yes. Okay, sorry, my, my headset quit, uh, cut out. Yeah, that is for seven man, the mechanic that we want to use. So you're awesome. correct. Yeah, I just didn't know if that was actually in the manual or it's just something everybody teaches. But I know that yeah. as far as I know, everyone is now is now teaching that because again, we want yep. to prioritize the lines. If that line to gain is threatened, we need to rule on first down and then and then move on to the goal line. So don't I don't want to think you stop there. You just, you pause, 
read the play, and, and mm -hmm. then get to the goal line. <clears throat> Reverse mechanics, same thing. It's the three yard line is kind of the line of demarcation. If we're three and in both line of scrimmage officials at the snap, you're going to immediately go go to that goal line and <clears throat> be able to rule on it. We got a great play on that coming up. In the mechanics says in between the three and the ten yard line. I mean, really, any time outside the three that the goal line's threatened is what it should say is. H, read the play and react to the goal line. So, again, we talk about how important the goal line is. If we're back in that area, I mean, even if it's the 11, 12, whatever it is, if you recognize that that goal line is starting to get threat threatened, head linesman, start, start working your way back to that goal line to rule on it. Uh, and your line judge will hold the line of scrimmage for, for any issues of, you know, forward pass or was the ball touched at or beyond the line, whatever it may be. So, H will read the play, get to the goal line if needed, and line judge, you'll, you'll stay put. Oh. This is an unrelated play to some of that stuff, but this is a great goal line mechanics play. The official does a great job. If you see at the snap, he's, I don't know how he got there, but he slid, ran, but he's boom. He's on the goal line. Uh oh, He's on the goal line extended. He's in perfect position, but as soon as the action comes at him, he moves. If I knew how to work a computer, he he moves upfield like like the play we saw earlier, and he takes himself out of position. And you'll see there's a lot going on here. I mean, you've got a catch. Does he complete the catch? Does he get a foot in bounds? Where's the ball? Um, in the end, he ends up getting it right, as you'll see. But we got to be in a better position to sell this call because this is a this is a great example that we talked about earlier. The pylon being out of bounds. Yeah, it looks like he just moved the wrong way. He should have just moved straight back instead of exactly. he should have just backed away from the pylon because he's already yep. there. Go straight been... back. I'm not sure he even needed to do anything. I mean, I know the players are coming at you. It's I think that's not... exactly what it was. It was just a flight kind of mentality. I got people running yeah. at me. I need to get out of the way instead of just Absolutely. backing straight out. And sometimes you don't have a choice. If you're, you know, in danger, you gotta get out of the way. Right? Self preservation at some point does take <clears throat> priority but in this he's got plenty of room i mean there's a camp i mean you could go back way back so you got to go straight back here but this is a great example of the pylon being out of bounds watch we got a catch the first thing that hits is that hand on the pylon as we talked about the pylon's out of bounds so this is the this is the same as if that hand had hit out of bounds in the white or the foot comes down out of bounds so although he's secured the ball He's controlled it. He's now got to get a body part down in bounds to complete the catch. And so as soon as he hits that pylon, he's out of bounds. Yeah, that's what I was so, going to say. That's what I said earlier about a you know, player in possession. So technically, he's yep. he has the ball in his grasp, but he nothing has, nothing has touched the field, the player, or the end zone. So it's not a catch yet. Yep. You still have to complete the process of a catch to score a touchdown. Meaning you've got to get something down in bounds. You got to Texas point possess it. So he gets the the control part here, but he's looking for something. And as soon as he hits that pylon, he's out of bounds. So the official gets this really incorrect. He nails it. Uh, but I think we could have really sold it if we were in in a better position. And you may give. The out of bounds signal here, the wiping and out of bounds signal. You could absolutely do that here to uh, to sell your call mm -hmm. as well to kind of to kind of signal that hey, he did catch it, but he's out of bounds. That that's what that signal does. We give that when they when they catch it, uh, but something lands out of bounds. So don't give it if it's if they drop the ball. We just want to give the incomplete. If they catch it and they land out of bounds, is when you want to give that uh, that wipe signal. So great job with the ruling here. Just could have been in a little better position. Yep. Again, Bruce, Got I don't the know call how you right, found, This was a state you found all game, these actually. awesome examples. These are things you just <laughs> live in my brain that I don't have any examples of. So this looks like a Dallas game. Again, this is going to be a long run. And unfortunately, I think we got five guys, but. 
I mean, this is it. This is that play where we you got to have someone on the goal line because, again, we've got to fumble in the field of play. This one's way more obvious than the last couple, right? This isn't at the one or the two. This ball is out at the, the eight. Bouncing out of bounds and through the end zone. So, again, I think we get this right. The back judge is he's doing something. I don't know if he gets a beanbag down or not, but. I think they ended up bringing it back to the spot of the fumble, which was incorrect. Um, oh. Yeah. So th since this ball went, was fumbled in the field of play, went out of the end zone, should have been a touchback. Yep. But the back judge, from what I can tell, is in great position. Right, I can't see him. Yes. But based yep, on yep. where he comes up, where he ends up, I think mm -hmm. he's on the goal line right now in a great spot. Mm -hmm. And so he's... See where he... You see a shadow here. I think he was in a fantastic position to rule on this. He... I mean, he was there with plenty of time to spare. Yep. Um, and he clearly comes in signaling he's got a fumble. But let let the play finish. I know it's human nature when something happens or we see something, or we want to we want to move towards it, right? So he sees a fumble and he knows he needs to get a beanbag down. So he starts moving towards that spot before the play ends, right? You know, there's a fumble at the eight, seven, six, whatever. Let the play end because he needs to also be aware of the result of the play, right? He's got to know the ball went out of bounds through the end zone. So try, really, really practice in these scrimmages too, just staying still when something like a fumble happens or, you know, there's kind of chaos in front of you. I think you'll see that you, you can rule a lot better and it's more clear than if you're moving. So I think if he just stays on the goal line, lets the play finish, then you can go toss your beanbag. The rule doesn't say you got to throw your beanbag the minute the ball's fumbled, right? The beanbag is just there to, to denote the spot of the fumble and the end of the run. So I think he's in a great position. We just got to let the play end, get our beanbag down. And then to Bruce's point, you got to know the result. The fumble goes into the end zone and out of bounds, right? So now we've got a fumble through the end zone. The result is a touchback. So we would have got our beanbag down out here in the field of play. And then could have got together with your sideline official. I mean, the sideline was threatened here. So you, you would want to talk, hey, inbounds, um, and then come out with a ruling of a touchback since the ball went through the end zone. Yep. Another example of where that extra 15, 30 seconds of communication could make the difference of getting it right or not. Yep, and I would expect the line of scrimmage official to have an opinion on this too. This this is your, you've got the runner to the two, right? So even in a five man game, you need to know if he's inbound or out of bounds, and this is a fumble. This is, if we had a guy here, he'd be back here, right? This is still your ruling as a line of scrimmage official. So you, you absolutely also need to know if this was fumbled, did it go out of bounds, and did it cross, you know, inside or outside the pylon? So. Uh, I would expect there to be some dialogue on this play for sure. Here's our reverse mechanics play. Uh, you see we're snapping at the one um, inside the three, obviously. So both of these officials at the snap are just going to take a step, I hope, right? Inside the three, we're both going at the snap. And you'll see our guy at the top, he thinks about it, I think. I mean, he he does a little something. And then he he doesn't go for whatever reason. And we get, of course, you know, a play that ends at the goal line and the ball's out and we're not sure, right? So we've got to get to the goal line when we're snapping. And our guy down here, same thing. The football god strike again. Oh, always. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know I don't know what we're doing down here. I think this is called wrestling, but um, oh no, that's just being that's a foul for the record. Um yep. yeah. You hit a guy that when he's already on the ground like this, no no. Um, but that's not why we're here. We gotta get to the goal line to be able to rule on this because unfortunately we don't have a good camera angle here, but I can tell you pretty confidently that this is not a fumble, right? He extends it and he's down the ball, the ground probably causes it to come out. So we're really ruling here did he get the entire ball out of the end zone and that's the point i also wanted to make here when team a is trying to avoid a safety they've got to get the 
entire ball out of the end zone. So for a touchdown, you've only got to break the plane. The tip of the ball has got to break it and you're in. To avoid a safety, you've got to get it all the way out. If even the tip of it is still in, it's in. So this ball has to come completely out of the end zone to avoid a safety. Um, and it's really, really close. And so if you're in a great position here with this film, we're going to believe whatever you rule. We don't have a choice, right? You're in the best, if you had slid down, you're in the best position in the world to make this call. You're right down the line. You can tell exactly where that ball is in relation to the goal line. So again, we got to talk when we get inside that area. Hey, my goal line. Um, I know most crews now use radios and communication. If you're in this area, HL, come on and remind your guy, hey, we've got the goal line. Um, I don't think anybody on the crew is going to mind that. It's, it's a critical, critical thing to have covered. So, you know, help, help your partner out. We've got the goal line. Um, and make sure we get there and then come in and, and give a strong signal here. Either hand up, he got it out, or kill the clock and, and we've got a safety. But we've just got to get we've got to get to the goal line in these situations to effectively rule on them. Bruce X, anything else on reverse goal line mechanics? No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it's it you know, it's paramount to when that ball's being snapped and handed off in the end zone to have a good look down the money line. Yep. Yeah, I'm I mean, it's one of those, it's, it's, you know, it's situational football. You got to know where you need to be in certain situations, especially something like this, you know? That's a great point, X. I think that's a phrase I should have been using. Situational football, know where you are and the timing in a game so you can, you know, get yourself in the proper position. But I'm stuck on this, this bully guy down here. This is mean. Well, it's not the topic Jeez. tonight, but uh, give us your feedback on who, who would actually be, who's the keys to be having eyes there at this point? Yeah, deep win. This is all you yeah. all day. In a five-man yeah. game, this is unfortunate. We're probably going to miss it um, just because it happens kind of in no man's land in relation to the play. But in seven-man deep wing, this is all you got, right? At the snap, you're probably looking in here since they're not pressed. But when you see your guy, like, aggressively charging when the play is clearly going the other way, you got to stay there, Right. And then he shoves him down. This is good. We're great. This is just a great overpower block. But now when you get a grounded player, this guy's very clearly defenseless, right? Cannot defend himself. Anytime a player goes and piles on a grounded player like that, you have a foul for unnecessary roughness. Mm -hmm. And if he goes at the head or with the head, you've got targeting. This player... Yeah, and and in five man, this was the back. I mean, the back judge would have been looking to the line judge side here. He probably would have had some eyes in here, ideally as well, to see yeah. that. But uh, yeah. and and you know that stuff usually is not a one time event. That's probably been happening for several plays. No, exactly. These guys are probably not best friends. They've been chirping, and he gets a cheap shot at him on the ground. Um, yeah, this is one we really, really got to get. Because to Bruce's point, if you let this go this play, I mean. You're going to get it again the next play, and you're going to get it again the next play. So good to yeah. get on those. Oh, hello. This is a fun play. I see you white pants here, Bruce. Yeah, but, you know, hey, the play's still valid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I mean, seriously, the fact that you found these plays is amazing. Again, this is a five-man mechanics. This is really, 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 really tough. But. We got to catch at the pylon, and this goes back to X's point of possession. You got to complete the catch still. But you get a guy. I'd love to know what people's initial thoughts on this are, but you get a foot down in the end zone. Here's a great shot at it. So he's got control of the ball, a foot down in the end zone. I don't think he's hit the pylon yet. And then he. At some point, hits the pylon. So he had a foot the down. Did, but yeah, yeah. But either way, he had a foot down in the end zone. Control, control first, yeah. Foot yeah. down in bounds, right? Control. Yep. So we've got a catch, and at some point, he either to Bruce when he either hits the pylon or he lands out of bounds. <laughs> but with this foot down in bounds here, what do we have? We've got goal line extended to forever. But 
And I think the issue Does is I don't think, ball... he, I think he's going the wrong direction. He never crossed the yep. goal line. Does this ball ever cross the goal line extended? Based on their body language, probably not. And so this is really tough to put all that together, to be processing. Because even if you're on the goal line, right, you're working feet. You're looking at catch. Okay, you're trying to figure out. These are great. Okay, boom, I got a foot down. Now you're trying to get back up to the ball. And if you're right here on this goal line, you you have a good opportunity to go work the feet first. So you see feet inbounds, get back to the ball. It's never beyond the plane. And that's why we're on the goal line, right? If you're standing right here, you're not you're not necessarily ruling, did the ball break the plane or not? You're just ruling, did the ball get beyond me, right? You're looking right down the line. So you're just judging in relation to your body where the ball is. And if you're right down the goal line, you're seeing, hey, that came, it never got past me, the ball. And so you would piece together that we've got a catch. He does get goal line extended, but that ball never crosses the goal line extended. So we end up with a, a completed catch where a player's feet are in the end zone, but it's not a touchdown. Again, this is Jack, a once you, in a forever play. You bring up a really good point. Um, Cause you know, when you see stuff like this, you know, it, it people always, you know, they either get deer in the headlights or, or something. Right. So it's really important to just go through your progressions, you know, um, first things first. I mean, if his feet are not in bounds, it doesn't matter what happens up top. Right. Exactly. It, it doesn't matter if his feet are not in bounds. So, you know, if you would just kind of run through the progression of what you should be looking at and when, because I think that's an issue, especially with younger officials, you know, they, they get kind of lost. That's what they need to look at, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of times you're looking at, you know, when there's a ball thrown over the middle of the field, we don't, we're not worried about the feet, right? So we're not always thinking about it, but when you have these tight sideline catches to actually point, what do you look at first? And, and what we're taught is you look at feet, and then ball, you've got to have a feel, right, for when that catch is imminent, when the ball's arriving, and you've got to be able to see, boom, you start with the feet, does it foot inbounds, boom, check, and then get back up to the ball, right? Because if he doesn't have a foot down, it doesn't matter if he caught it or not. So you go feet. In this case, you would start here. You see him coming. I wish I could get it back to where it was. But you'd see the ball coming in. You sense there's a catch. Right now you're looking at the feet. You know the catch, if he makes it, is going to happen right about now. So you see foot and, okay, check. Now get back to the ball to make sure he sticks it. You're good. And then, again, now you've got to process where the ball was in relation to the goal line. But the process on these tight sideline catches is feet, then ball. That's a great play. I just, again... Here we get another one where we've got some unfortunate um, positioning, call it. But you get a mess here. And what are we doing here? Watch again. So this ball snapped, I don't know, inside, we'll call it inside the seven. So we need to be moving to the goal line, goal line extended. And now we've got, what do we got? We've got a fumble, clearly. So this official should be. Standing back here somewhere. Bag. Exactly. Bruce's point. Toss you just you can toss your beanbag anywhere just to, den to denote what line it was on. Throw it out here if you want. But you should be on the goal line still. We're unfortunately now we're moving all over the place. We've got a fumble. And now we've got a loose ball that we've got to rule on recovery, right? And so to effectively make this ruling, we need to be as still as possible, right? If we're moving, which th this official unfortunately is, you know, your eyes are all over the place. He's not really sure the goal line, the pylon, he's, his perspective is distorted, right? So we need to be on the goal line here still. If we're standing still, this is the shot you've got. You can see, doesn't look like anyone's possessed it. Okay, clearly this player is out of bounds, right? And he touches the ball. So that gets us into another, you know, rules thing. If a loose ball touches anything out of bounds, it's also out of bounds, right? So the ball doesn't have to be out of bounds to be out of bounds. If a player is out of bounds and he touches a loose ball, a fumble, the ball is now out of bounds. So if this ball is loose, which 
I can tell you it is. And he touches it with his body out of bounds. It is dead at that point. Right? Same thing with the pylon. If you're touching the pylon, the ball's dead with you in possession. If you touch a loose ball and you're out of bounds, that ball's out of bounds. So right here, we would, to Bruce's point, we would want to bean back down, and then we would just be working. Who's going to recover it? Okay, now I've got a, a what do you have? You have a fumble forward out of bounds, which is, again, why that bean bag is so critical, because now we're going back to the spot of the fumble. Forward fumble out of bounds, you go back to the spot of the fumble, and the clock would start on the ready. But you've got to know the rules here in and out that a loose ball touched by an out-of-bounds player is out-of-bounds. Not only that, since it's out-of-bounds, oh, I had a fumble forward out-of-bounds, and now we've got to take the ball back out here to the four-yard line, and Team A is going to keep it. And again, that's a huge ruling because if you decide that for whatever reason the defense recovered this, now it's their ball at the one-yard line. Uh, so again, we've got to put ourselves in a better position than this to make this ruling, and we've got to know all the rules surrounding inbounds, out-of-bounds, and the goal line. Again, Bruce, great play. I don't know where you got this camera angle, but if you shot this on your phone, it's incredible. No, it's just calling uh, stealing stuff off of other organizations' websites. It's awesome. I mean, this looks like someone's just shooting it. Like, yeah, just... Yep. The homemade yeah, video, goal line yeah, mechanics. Great video, yep, yep. And we got one, oh, well, one last play. We've covered a ton, so if anyone has questions, please fire. I feel bad. This might be our same guy that was on the last play, it feels like, but... This is a tough play, Bruce, and I don't know how much we want to touch on five-man mechanics because it's a five-man game and the ball's technically snapped at the eight. Um, my opinion yeah. is you still need to go to the goal line. Yeah, well, five-man really only touch – it's kind of silent outside of the five. It says from the five in that you want to get to the goal line, but I think if he would have read this play, his instinct should have taken him to the goal line and wide. Uh, yeah. It looks like he kind of just got a little bit of cement feet there for a minute. I mean, the ball's coming to his side, right? Exactly. Yeah. Again, that's a great point. Once you read this play, it's a catch. Even in five, once you see this, you need to start heading that way, regardless of where it's snapped, because you don't have any help. Um, in a seven-man game, we don't have this problem because you've got your, you've got your deep wing already there, you know, stationed mm -hmm. on the goal line to make this ruling. But again, it's another and, tight play. But yeah, and this is exacerbated line, because I you're not going to have that back judge here, right? In this case, he's on the end line, so it's kind of you and best case help from the umpire maybe that's it. yeah yeah it's whoever's on this pylon and i think if you're on the pylon on this play you're gonna get we're gonna get this right most of the time if we're standing right here and we're still because you'll see right the runner dives into the pylon and his shoulder his elbow might hit down first anyway but at this point right here his shoulder hits the pylon so he gets goal line extended but again plays over falls dead and if his shoulder's hitting the pylon and the ball is behind his shoulder, you know he's short, right? That's what we've got to be able to, to practice when we watch these plays and watch film is, is seeing what hits the pylon and knowing where that ball is in relation to when it becomes dead. You know it hits. You know for sure that ball is behind the shoulder that hits. And so we can confidently rule this. And maybe he does. I don't know what he's pointing at. But... Um, it's you know, another yeah, good gonna, play, but if yeah, you're in a good no, I position, say, I think we get this. <laughs> yeah, this is, I, um, I think... Go ahead, Dave Zaber. Go ahead. Um, this is another one of those things that, that I was mentioning earlier. I mean, it, it's situational football. I know it's I know yeah. it's five-man, and I know that in five-man, you know, you have to trail the play, but I mean, how far I mean, you, how far are you going to trail it when you're at the eight-yard line? You have to make your okay. way to the goal line. Even if it's five-man mechanics. Yeah, and I, and I was going to say, even let's just talk about, okay, we know the play's dead, the runner's down. Just mechanically, this L, there's there you're not selling anything by running. You, first of all, it should be killing the clock, right? Mm -hmm. And he's not doing any of that. And then going up and pointing down to the ground is not, in this case, I don't think that's a strong sell. But uh, I, I don't know what the final ruling was here either, be, to be fair to this line judge. I don't know if he ruled touchdown. I'm assuming he didn't because he ran up to the ground and was pointing down. But... I think even after the play could have 
probably sold it a little bit better as well. Yeah, I don't know when when pointing at the ground is ever like a good sell. I think that's a basketball thing. Someone can mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're going to, I mean, to Bruce's point, if it's out of bounds, just kill the clock, right? Everyone knows mm -hmm. you've got him out of bounds. Or, you know, if you're selling an incomplete pass, you kind of, you pat the ground, but pointing, um, I don't really think, to Bruce's point, I don't think that helps you out much here. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think killing the clock, or if he had his elbow down in bounds, lined it, whatever it is, you, you got to give a signal here. Um, give to give sig something to signify what you're ruling you're ruling him down you're ruling i mean even if you're on touchdown do right like what's he officiating right now he's got one two three four five ten players around him and he's looking at the turf right i think, so, he's, setting the, I think he's setting the pylon back up no don't. <laughs> no i'm, no, I'm kidding i'm kidding i was, like, I'm oh kidding. <laughs> that was a joke <laughs> almost had a heart attack um <laughs> but yeah stay back and just give your signal and make your ruling or if you're on the goal line give it from right here um, we don't need to go point, you know, the ball was six inches short, right? Your signal of killing the clock will signify that you've got him short. But another great play. Five-man mechanics are tough, so. Luckily, we're we're working seven in most varsity games now. Is that correct? I mean, what's our percentage? It's high, isn't it? Beck, do you know this? Yeah, it's, it's very little of five-man mechanics. There's still some districts. Um, that do it, but for the most part, you know, a big, big, big change last couple of years to just seven man, which is great. Yeah, it is. It puts us in, you guys see these plays, right? With five, it's really hard. With seven, it's, I mean, it makes a world of a difference on these goal line plays, which are the most important in, in most games. Yeah. So, and, and as you know, the only games we have replay on are championship games. So we've got to go with our first instincts and even more important to be in position to make that you know, best call. Yep. And, and to communicate to Bruce's point, I think Bruce hit on that a couple of times. Don't be afraid to get together and talk. I mean, I know we talk about making the game go quickly and efficiency, but on these critical plays, 30 seconds, a minute, even at the end of the day is not that long. I know it feels like forever out there on the field, but, but really take your time and, and make sure we're getting to the best answer. I think coaches, fans, everybody would, appreciates that if, if at the end of the day we get it right if it takes a little longer no big deal well well thanks again uh jack and thanks to ricky heron thanks yeah it was great and thanks to ricky <laughs> heron i know he wasn't feeling well uh thanks thank you to you guys to go through this mm -hmm. and prepare it and um spend the time tonight uh we did cover a lot of great plays a lot of great video i hope everyone got something out of this i will be posting uh this uh, recording to YouTube and sending it out. And then also a link to the presentation if anybody wants to access it. So you can watch it over and over again if you want to and uh, refer to it. But uh, can't thank you enough, Jack, and uh, tell Ricky thank you as well. Absolutely, thank you all for having me anytime. And if people have questions, please reach out. It doesn't have to be about goal line plays, anything. I'll, uh, I'll always, I'm always here to talk football and answer any questions. Appreciate it, Jack. Yep. Much appreciated. Thanks, guys. Thank you.